Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Welcome to another five talking points video after our one 0 win over Videoton last night. And for today's video, I'm going to be talking about Sari and youth. I'm going to be talking about Alvar Morata and pressure at the top. I'm going to be talking about Loftus Cheek and his performance yesterday. I'm going to be talking about what we miss out when Rudiger and Louise don't play. And I'm going to be talking about Kepa and how he's been performing over the following weeks. You guys know what to do. Smash that like button. Help me get more than 500 likes for today's video. And press the bell notification button as well to stay tuned to all things Blue Line CV. Starting with the first point, And I need to talk about Sari and whether he has a youth problem now. You know what? I've been thinking about this for a while. Obviously, cast your minds back to the summertime. Me in particular, I kept vouching for Sari. I kept talking about the fact that it's completely different at Chelsea. You know, we've got better youth team players. You have to respect the context of Napoli's season last year. It's the closest they've been in 20 years to winning a trophy. So it's understandable that Sari isn't going to rely on youth and he's not going to rotate as much. But you guys, you know what? I'm thinking to myself now, I might have to hold a major L for myself. Now, it doesn't mean I hate Sari. I don't want anyone to think so basic, thinking, ah, oh, because Sari doesn't use youth, that means that Nini doesn't like him and Nini's going to start talking shit about Sari. Of course, I'm not basic like that. And I understand what Sari's saying, as I constantly say, you know, Sari wants that first thing to play more and more together to really perfect that system. So it does make sense. But I have to say, though, it comes down to certain things like the management in which you use these players. Now, of course, the Europa League, I really thought that was going to be a trophy and tournament where you were going to blood a lot of the youth players. You know, you look at someone like uh, Hudson Adoy, he performed very well during preseason. He was our best player during preseason. And Padoui's shown what he's can do. The guy's been caught up for Wells, got a man of the match performance against him as well. And it's kind of like, you know, when these guys are performing well, they're doing well in training and they're playing well. And I feel that Sari isn't rewarding them for their work so far just yet. And it looks like Hudson Adoy and Ampadu have lost their places in the team to Moses and Gary Cahill. Now, a cynical part of me is thinking, Maybe it makes sense why Chelsea want to start using Moses and Kale a bit more. You know, the January window is coming up. Kale was talking about potentially leaving. I've been hearing things for a while about Moses potentially leaving in January as well. Maybe they're thinking, you know what? There's a few players we actually didn't sell during the summer. We can't afford to get to that place where we can't get rid of players and we end up just paying massive wages and missing out on a ton of money. So maybe the reason why Chelsea are playing the long-term game could be because obviously they want to get that transfer value. But something tells me that's not the case. And really, you know, it comes from the energy I'm getting from Sari in press conferences whenever he's talking about Ampadu and hudson Adoy. And so far, he's never really spoke about them in an assertive manner. He's never spoke about them in the sense that they are part of the team, they will be playing, etc, etc. And the same thing we keep hearing all the time is that these guys aren't ready just yet. It's not the right time. It's not the right time. And so far, we've played quite a lot of easy teams. We're looking at the options on the bench as well. Have they really been providing as much when they come off? Not really. I mean, you guys like Hudson Odoi and Ampadu, you're looking at your contemporaries playing for other clubs. You know, Mason Mount being caught up for England, which is phenomenal and amazing. Guys like Sancho getting this chance as well. And you're looking at other guys like Madison playing too. And, you know, look at Sancho, for example. You know, Hudson Adoy and Sancho are part of that same age group. You know, Ampadu's part of the same age group as those guys on top of that. And they're really testaments of what you can get if you just believe in these guys you have. And no one can say anything about Hudson Adoy not being good enough yet to play for us, which is a complete myth. But it looks like we're starting to see another familiar Chelsea pattern of not really relying on youth and giving them an opportunity to play, especially when so far there have been so many games where we can use them or they have had the possibility to at least come on as a sub for the last 15 minutes. We're not seeing that. Now, I know what people are going to say, and it's normally that same old cliche argument points that are always made all the time. There's never anything different. It always comes down to, our oh, trust the manager. Maybe he's seen something in training that we're not seeing. Maybe these guys aren't as good enough. Or my favourite one, it's a massive risk to use youth players because the managers know that they're under pressure. And it's like all of these points... You can just always count at them every single time. I mean, when's the last time, for example, Chelsea have sacked a manager in the first few months? It doesn't happen anymore. I don't know why people don't understand that we've moved away from doing that. This is why managers get more time. Even when Mourinho left, that was mostly down to him, I found out, because he told the board, you know what? I can't do anything with these players. Maybe it's best for all of us that I leave. I don't know. I'm looking at Sari, and obviously, he's very good when it comes to squad management. But I'm thinking that currently, because there's so many players, so many older players, experienced players in the team, he needs to keep these guys a bit happy. If he decides to start using the younger players over them, 
it could make things a bit difficult and he doesn't want that you know he's still a new manager he wants the squads in his full image mentally uh physically and everything so i can understand from that coaching perspective why you look at the youth players and you'll think you know what i can afford to not have to consider you guys just yet because there's still a lot of players in the books that we can't get rid of just yet and i can't afford to have anything messing up with the balance of the teams so in a way even though i've been sounding a bit pessimistic that is the last optimistic thought i do have hopefully when it comes to january we're going to start seeing more of these guys getting a chance let's see if that does happen but you guys in the comment section below because i know that this point will definitely be controversial a lot of people have very strong opinions on youth let's be objective here let's not be too tribalistic remember but the same supporters so let me read your thoughts and opinions below now moving on to the second talking point and that's in regards to loftus cheek and his performance yesterday and as I was saying in the match review, you know, I've seen the game a second time now. I felt that it was a very promising performance from Loftus-Cheek. And I really think that, and he showed Sorry what exactly he's about, you know. He was taking responsibility in midfield. When he saw openings and spaces, he had the confidence to drive through them and carry the ball. Which is signs that you want to see, you know. His passing, very quick, very sharp in the final third. He didn't lose the ball, he was press resistant and he won 50-50s as well. And that's all the type of things that you want to see from Loftus-Cheek. And when it comes to what sari has been saying about him, you really get the impression that Sari has really sympathised, you know. Ruben was unfortunate that after he joined the England national team squad, he came back with an injury. That's where it came. Sari before then was talking about the fact that Ruben just needs to get up to things tactically in terms of positions to take up and pressing and where to be when we're on the ball and off the ball. But for a guy like Ruben, that's not going to take him too long. But at the same time, it's not the first time that we've seen an academy player perform well or perform better on average than some of the other senior players in the team. And it is really annoying, you know, when it comes to Ruben, he's a guy that's constantly been rated. You know, I was told before when Conte was a manager and Ruben was there, Ruben was one of the best performing players in training. Conte knew that, yet still never gave him a chance to actually see what he's about. And with Ruben, you know, it's a bit worrying because you want to start taking your career to another level. Stats came out comparing Ruben to Mason Mount. Mason Mount's played about 50 something games. Ruben's played about 60 something, but Mason Mount's 19. Ruben's 22 years old and Mason Mountain has played more first team games than Ruben has during those years and it's just like Ruben made his debut when he was like 17 I think so he's been playing for a while and he's barely played any football whatsoever to think that at his age he still hasn't accumulated more than 100 games which again I feel the club have definitely let him down and they haven't really stood by him and again it's interesting you know is Ruben still gonna have that possibility of ever becoming a first choice midfield player I'm still not too sure even at that game yesterday Sari still subbed him off for Barkley he didn't sub off Kovacic he brought Barkley on and it seems like whenever Sari talks about Barkley he talks about him with more enthusiasm and infection compared to some of the other players at the club so it is quite interesting you know for Ruben to develop is Chelsea the right club for him you guys let me know in the comment section below do you think maybe I'm worrying a bit too much and I'm overthinking yes his performance was promising but how many more opportunities will he get during the course of the season moving on to the third talking point that's in regards to Val Morata and yes he finally scored against them yesterday I was saying in my match preview that Morata needs to score a goal 100% no excuses he did get that you know, when the game started, he missed that very good chance. It was kind of Torres-esque in the sense that, you know, he should be burying that. And you're thinking as a fan, oh, it's going to be one of those games. But as it goes on, he gets his goal. And I felt his celebration was completely different to anything I've ever seen on a football pitch. I've never seen that much emotion and it was really like watching a weight lifted off Murata. The way the team celebrated with Murata as well, it's like they understood his struggles too and I think that, I don't know, I, I felt really sad when I was watching it and it really makes you think you know the pressures that Premier League footballers get these days is incredible especially with social media you know whenever you make a mistake it's on social media forever people always retweet that and let's be serious with the age we live in it's not as simple as oh I'm not going to pick up a newspaper I'm not going to go online everyone uses it it's just part of how things are and things slip through all the time and it looks like he's definitely been suffering mentally now that's always been the thing with Morata it's always been a confidence thing even when he was at Juventus and being at Real Madrid as well and I don't think that's something that can be coached to be improved upon this is why he's always been a form player you know when he's on good form he'll score chances he's not normally scoring when he doesn't have that form behind him 
he does look kind of average and I think most of it does come down to that lack of confidence in himself and of course you know it makes you think too us fans don't really give him an easy time you know I've had my critiques of Morata I think on social media it can be a bit too extreme you know you get people adding the players which I'll never understand if you support the club with the players and yeah have your critiques and your opinions but there's a fine line don't don't cross that line what's the point of that you only make yourself look like a dickhead in my opinion but I do think it's one of those unspoken things that happens and that's prevailing in modern day football the mental health of players in that sense. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that Morata's got some mental illness, of course not. But when I'm talking about mental health, you know, it's that constant feeling of pressure. And, um, you know, pressure does affect players. I remember when Lampard was on Copa 90, he said that he had a stat during the tournament of taking the most shots without scoring a goal. And he said that it was constantly in the press all the time. And he said that it did affect his game because when it came to taking chances or taking shots that he'd normally confidently take whenever, he was second guessing himself and by second guessing himself it meant that he wasn't taking these shots or he wasn't taking them early enough and that happened to Frank Lampard. I understand the fan perspective and I'm not trying to say you, you can't have opinions or you can't critique players, of course you can, we are men at the end of the day but I think that there's levels in which you can do this stuff and I'm really thinking that he needs some support, it would be great if the crowd and the fans could give him that support so he can feed off that energy but let's hope that Morata can get that confidence back or he can get that form back because I can't lie, I'm kind of sympathising for the guy. Moving on to the fourth talking point and I need to talk about Kepa now with Kepa, as I've always said in videos, the guy's confidence is amazing. Whenever I watch this guy play, his posture is upright, head is constantly up. You don't see Kepa looking down on the ground. When he's playing passes, my guy's got his head up every single time. He knows what he's going to do with the ball before he gets it. And his passing is elite as well. And one thing with Kepa, he's always been fantastic acrobatically. And we're starting to see signs of that now. It was kind of weird how people had small small criticisms of Kepa which I think were very unfair because he hasn't really been tested that much in a game but already you can tell that he has the confidence of the defenders in front of him because they know that they can pass the ball to him in any situation he's not going to mess it up fantastic shop stopper on top of that that save he made at the end so you know sloppy piece of play but great hands great speed to get down like that to save it and keep his hand very strong as well it was a world-class save and honestly, I think it was fantastic business signing this guy. He's only going to get better. I'm not really seeing any flaws in this game so far when it comes to defending set pieces. He's been very strong. He's been very good on top of that as well. And I always thought that would be one area in this game that might be slightly affected because obviously, you know, going to La Liga, coming here, the physicality is crazy. And it's not in terms of the sense that players are stronger. It just means that they're more physical and referees allow much more physicality. But Kep is really being suited to that and it does make quite a lot of sense. You know, Athletic Bilbao have always been quite a, a, a strong type of physical team in La Liga. So it does make sense that he can adapt to that football. But you guys in the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions on Kepa. Are you happy with this guy? Do you think that he's better than Courtois? Let me know below. And to end on the final talking point, that's in regards to the back four. Now, again... Kale and Christensen weren't bad, but the comparison I want to make between them with Rudiger and Luiz is the fact that, and I'm always saying this all the time, with Rudiger and Luiz, they're like having additional playmakers in the team, and it's how they use the ball when they're playing out from the back. And I kind of feel that it's so essential and important how we play out from the back because that's how we start our attacks. We always do that. If the passes are too slow, if they're too pedestrian, if they're not finding players in the right time, in the right angles or in the right positions on the pitch, there's going to be problems in terms of how we can actually break teams down with our passing. And again, with Christensen, I sympathise, I understand, you know, Christensen's always been that defender that breaks the lines, that pushes into midfield. That's what he does. He doesn't really do that with his passes. To be honest, can he adapt that to his game? I think so. But you have to play regularly to be able to work on that and improve on that. I'm not really seeing him play that much. And let's be serious. And let's be serious. You know, he's been playing beside Kale mostly compared to guys like Rudiger or David Luiz. So it's not as if he has them beside him. I think with Kale as well, he hasn't done anything wrong. To be honest, he's been playing against pretty decent opposition. But the passing is just a bit too sideways. And when it comes to playing a forward pass, it's always playing that safe 
easy calculated forward pass and not the right pass that's going to start the attack or start the moves. How many times recently have we seen with the goals we have been scoring recently where the attacks have come from a fantastic pass from Rudiger or a fantastic pass from David Luiz and it transforms our possession play and the dimensions in which we break down teams. We're not seeing that so far just yet, even with Ampadu. When I've seen Ampadu play under Sari, even, even in the small games he has played, you see the forward passes, you see him play those balls as well. And I really think that Christensen, it's unfortunate, but he does have to adapt his game a bit more to be more suited to Sari. But he's got time, the guy's only 22 years old, so it's going to be exciting to see what happens with Christensen. Anyway, you guys, that's going to be the end for today's five talking points video. You know what to do. Smash that like button. Help me get more than 500 likes for today's video. You guys, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Line CV. I'll see you guys later.